Hi, welcome to the AP Calculus class. This is our first lesson. So at this lesson, I'd like to use uh, maybe five to 10 minutes and do a brief introduction about uh, what is calculus about. And then we are going to our first topic is limit here. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, get started. You should be able to find uh, this template for you to take note, you know, in the Google Classrooms here. Otherwise, you know, you can use this template, just to take the notes in your notebook. That will work also. All right, so the first thing is we're going to take a look since this is our calculus class, right? So let's take a look. For the calculus, we have two branches for the calculus. So one is differentiation and another is integration. So we're going to talk about what is differentiation involved and what is integration involved. Okay, so very briefly, what is the differentiation? So basically, is we are talking about is the rate of change here. Okay, and uh, for the rate of the change, so the differentiation also from the math part is heavily, you know, the related to the, well, I shouldn't say related. So it's a heavily use of the algebra scheme. Okay. And also in the most college, we take the calculus class, and uh, the differentiation part, we always call the calculus one here. So the integration, the key concept, you know, is talk about is finding. So basically, is finding the area on the a curve. Okay, so. For the integrations here, so we are mainly we use the in the first develop we use a lot of the geometry skill. Okay, because we find the areas right, and then in here in the college class, typical we call this is the calculus two classes here. So as you can see, you know the. The differentiation is based on the, you know, a lot of the things was based on the, the algebra skill and for the integrations is we heavily related to the ge geometry skills here. So from the history of the math, we know the geometry was developed many, many hundred years before the algebra. So the integrations was developed way earlier than the differentiations here. And uh, not, and, you know, as you can see, the algebra scale, the algebra was not developed maybe till the beginning or later of the 17th century. So it's kind of like a relative new science here. Okay, so now we know the integration was developed hundreds and hundreds of years earlier in the differentiation. And then now, what happens here, right? So finally, at the 17th century, now we have two people. We have uh, Newton, as always, right? And um, that means, okay? So Newton is from the England, and that means is from the Germany. And so they were only, you know, if you, like, if you take a look here, you know, they, they were born, they were only four years apart. So they were developing this concept separately. You know, so they noticed the differentiation integration. So they kind of find and say, oh my gosh, these two, even they developed separately, 100 years apart, they really have a relationship. Okay, so that's why, you know, later, I think uh, very close to the, maybe the middle or the, at a, like a, a little bit over the middle of the semester, we will talk about is the fundamental theory 
uh, spectaculars. Okay, so let's what we call the FPC. So let's start to find these things. Let's say, oh, well, these three, these two things, even they were developed separately, but they have a relation. So let's find the fundamental theory of the calculus. So basically, they try to establish the relation between the differentiation and the integrations. And this is, this relationship is a very, is the relation we are quite familiar with. So it turns out we find out the differentiation integration. They are kind of basically is a kind of like just the inverse function concept, right? So it's kind of like the inverse function concept of each other. So that is pretty cool. Okay. So that is like very, very the high level about the calculus here, right? So we have a differentiation and integrations. And uh like I would say, the integration was developed earlier than the, you know, the differentiation. But, um, you know, like if you take a look around the world, you know, when you talk about the calculus class, the calculus one, we always start at the differentiation, then we go to the integration. I think it is because of it's easier to go to these directions here, because, because the derivative in general is uh, somehow is easier than integration. All right, so now this is the basic idea about the, you know, the, the two branches of uh, the calculus. So the first unit we're going to talk about is here, is a limit, okay? So this is, we say, okay, so we say why, you know, for almost all the calculus class, before we even go to really take a look at the, differentiations and integration. We always spend a good amount of the time to talk about the limits here. Okay, so what's that means? Right? Why the limits is a, such an important topic in the calculus, okay? So let's take a look here. So what is the differentiation of the function at a certain point? So this is what we call is a derivative. So what does the derivative mean? Or what is the differentiation of a function at a certain points? Okay, so what that means here? Okay, so that is really means uh, is the slope of the tangent line. Okay, so that's what is the slope of the, the tangent line at the specific point, right? So remember that the whole semester about the differentiation, we talk about the derivative. So it's amazing. It's basically, this is what we are looking for. It's the slope of the tangent lines here. Okay, so you say, oh, okay, the slope of the tangent line. That's what the derivative is about, right? So why we want the limit concept? Okay, let's take a look here. Okay, so let's take a look at this idea. Okay, so if this is my function, see here, right? So let's say this is my function, f of x, and uh, I have a point here. Okay, so I said this point is A here. Okay, and now I've said, uh, okay, so we know it's the slope of the tangent line. So the derivative here, we'll say here, um, we can get a good graph here. Okay, so here. Okay, so this is the tangent lines, right? So this is the tangent line. So this is a tangent line, means is you touch the curve at one point, right? So this is a tangent line. And I want to find the slope, right? So this is the tangent line. Okay, so like if here, then I know I have a value functions so f of a. Okay, so how do I find the tangent line? How do I find the slope? Slope from the algebra, we know the slope is what? Slope is the rise over one. Okay, so I need to have two points in order to get the slope. 
So I said, okay, so now let's take a look. Okay, so now let me give you another point. So how about, okay, so let's see here. I have, a, I choose another point here. So this point is called B here. Okay, now if you connect these two points here, all right, so for the two points, if you connect the two points on a curve, this line we call the eastern second line. Okay, because you cannot be, so this point is f of b. All right, so now I know the slope of the second line is going to be rise over runs, right? So we'll just be the fb minus f of a, b minus a here. Okay. But my goal is to try to find this uh, slope of this tangent lines here, right? Okay, so now let's see how, how about if I push the B a little bit closer here, okay? So in here, let's use a different columns here. So if I push the B to here, okay? So this is my new B here, getting a little bit closer to the A. So now you find, okay, so now if I kind of connect with these two points, I hope that it's very difficult to draw the line here. Okay, so if I connect these two points here. All right, as you can see, this is the, when the, you know, the point B getting closer, right? So you can see this orange line is getting closer and closer to my tangent line. So if you want to get it even closer here, so let's see here if I put a light blue here. Okay, so if I put a, push the B, this is my new B here. This is my another B. So if I getting closer and closer, push the B to the A. Then you connect this two. You see here, this light blue is almost equal to the dark blue tangent lines here. So I know I have a tangent line in order to find the slope of the tangent line. I just need to let the B get closer and closer to A, right? So now this is how we do here. We say the slope of the tangent lines here for well, these examples, right? So really is you just let the limit, that's what we use the limit, B getting closer and closer to A, right? Then we use the second line slope, FB minus F of A, B minus A here. All right, so that is why, so did you see here? That's why, you know, though we have this uh, limit here, right? So that is why we said uh, we want to know limit because let our basic definition about the derivative is based on this simple concept. I just want to push the B getting closer and closer to the A here. So now I know my second line started with this green one. We're getting closer to the orange one and getting closer to the blue ones, all right? Okay, now let's take a look at my second big branch is here. One is a differentiation. So if you know the differentiation, let's try to find the derivatives, right? So is it, what is the simple way to say? It's the slope of the tangent line. You will basically hear me to say these things almost throughout the semester with the slope the tangent lines here. So that's why you see, that's why we use the limit concept. How about uh, why the differentiation, we also use the limit concept. So in here, they say, what is the integration over uh, intervals here? All right, so what does that mean? So that means that basically is the area under the curve You know the in between in the in the in this intervals here. Okay, so I'm looking for is the area under the curve in this interval. 
All right, let's take a look and see why the limit concept will be used again. All right, okay, so here, let's go here. All right, so here, this is my function again. Okay, so here is my interval A and B. All right. So now I am going to find the integration. So basically, is I'm trying to find this area, you know, the under the curve uh, and uh, between these two points inside the interval C, right? So as you can see, you know, the this, you know, the um, this area is not a regular shape. It's not a rectangle. It's not a triangle. It's not square. It's kind of the weird shapes here. So how do I find the areas here? Okay, so this is where we're going to use the, you know, the limit concept again. So the first we said, okay, let's try to approximate it, just like we do the second line to approximate tangent lines, right? So in here we say, oh, okay, how about let's, uh, let me divide this interval into a four equal sub interval. Then for each one here, okay, so just for example, see here, right? And then instead of, so for each sub interval, I will find a, a rectangle. So I will try to approximate the first one with this rectangle, the second one with this rectangle, the third one with this rectangle, the fourth one with this rectangle, right? So now I can say, okay, so I will do this one. I add this rectangle, add this rectangle, and add this rectangle, and this rectangle. They are not the exactly the area under the curve, but it's pretty close. Correct? All right. So now where is the limit concept to come? So they say, okay, instead of uh, dividing into like a four, how about I even define the define the, instead of four, I define the into a rectangle. Now I start to find the, the area of this A. Right? So the area of this A rectangles here. So I will have here, 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 right here, 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 here. So as you can see, the red area still not the exact area of the, you know, the area under the curve, but it's more precise than the blue area because I defined it into a finer, you know, finer rectangles, right? So as you can see, in order to find, uh, you know, the, the true areas here, so I will just select the what? I will just let the limit, uh, n going to the infinities, right? So what is n? This is the numbers of the sub-interval. Okay, so this one, let me write it better. So this is n to the infinities here. So that's what is the concept that will tell you, hey, if I divide uh, this, uh, intervals into like the infinity, it's very, very fine divided. Then my area will be very, very big. You know, the, will be approximate to the area will be way better so here. Okay, so in here, this is just our very um, rough interrupt, the, you know, the introduction, talk about what the two branches of the calculus. Now we're going to start to introduce our first unit is the limit. So here is one very important concept is why the limit is used. How is it used in the differentiation? How is it used to integration here, okay? So the key things for here to remember is for the derivative, you know, at the point is the slope of the tangent line. So remember this, 
And then uh, here, this is the key concept that we're going to deal with for the first semester is the slope of the tangent line. Is when you approach, you know, when the other point B getting closer and closer to the A, then you use the second line to approach it. All right. Okay. So now we'll be able to formally start our definitions. What is the limit here? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Let's take a look. What is the limit uh, definition? The first, uh, let's take a look. The notations here, the way we say the limit, this is how do we write. We say limit, L I N. Then we say when X approach to A, okay, F of X equal to M. What's that means? Yeah, so the first one here, remember that is how do we write the limit. So it's limit X approach to A, F of X equal to L. What's that means? So this means, okay, that, uh, as uh, x get uh, closer and closer to the number a, okay, and here be careful about uh, not. Uh, equal to a, okay, then the uh, corresponding value of the f of x will get uh, closer and uh, also to else here. Okay, so here let's see the keyword here. All right, so the keyword here is when the x is getting closer and closer. That means I'm getting closer and closer to this number, but it does not equal to. All right, so it's not equal to, it's just very, very close. And then my function value is getting closer and closer, right? So my function value is getting closer and closer to else here. Okay, so now, so basically what that means here, so that means thing here, right? So if you have a function like this, so this is an example of the x functions here, right? So here is my A, okay? So this is my A's here. And then here, this is my L. And now, so this is my X here, right? So when the X is getting closer, right? So when the X is getting closer and closer to A, so the corresponding values here, right? So this is a corresponding value, f of x is going to get closer and closer to l. That's what that means here. Then the uh, one very natural question you will ask, you say, oh, can I get an x closer and closer? Can I close and closer from this side? Absolutely, okay? So that's why we're going to have the next step formations here. So this is the limit approximation from the right-hand side. Okay, so what's that mean? Okay, so that means, uh, okay, so be very careful about the notation with the limit x approach to a. Okay, then from the right-hand side, we put the plus signs here. Okay, f of x. This is what we call the, the limit approach from the right-hand side is a positive signs here. Okay, so that means if uh, this way, this is approach from the right, right? All right, so the next one's here from the left here. So this is our notation. We said is limit x approach to a, 
Right, from the left to the left, the negative sign sitting. This is the F of X. Okay, so be very careful. That's what is the, you know, the, the left hand side here. So finally, we can say limit exists. What do I mean? The limit exists here. Okay, so the limit exists. This is a super important here, right? So we say if uh, limit, okay, x approach to a from the right hand side, okay, f of x is equal to the limit x approach to a from the left hand side, okay, and they both equal to some value L. Now we can say limit x approach to a f of x equal to, we can say limit uh, f of x uh, exists. Right? And the limit x approach to a f of x equal to l is here. Okay, so this is a super, super important definition about what is the limit exists. So very easily just say the right limit has to equal to the left limit. If the right limit equal to the left limit, then the limit exists. It's a simple definition here. Okay, so it's a very, very simple definition. It's the left limit equal to the right limit here. Okay, so now let's go ahead, go to our worksheets and uh, take a look at some of the problems based on these definitions. Okay, okay, so this is our first worksheet so called the limit and the continuities here. So let's take a look at uh, problem number one to see if we'll be able to get it or not. Okay, so this is the graph, right? So the first thing here is limit. This is x approach to two from the what? From the left hand side, right? So two is here. Approaching to two from the left hand side, that means that my value go closer and closer, right? So the x is getting closer and closer to two from the left hand side. So that means my function value is getting closer and closer to three, right? Mm -hmm. All right, so now the next ones here, they said x approaching to two from the right-hand side. From the right-hand side, that means this is the truth, right? From the right-hand side, so it's going to be getting closer and closer to. So what is going to closer and closer to? It's going to closer and closer to one. Right, so even we don't have the value defined here, but I know it's getting very, very close to one. Okay, so now the C is here, the limit x approach to two f of x. So what is this limit? This limit is do not uh, what do not exist. Why? Because left limit is not equal. To the right limit, right? So these two limits is not equal to. Okay, so now the next question is here. This, the first problem, just make sure you know all the notations, right? F of the two, what is the F of the two means? So this is the function value. Right, so when X equal to two, so X is equal to two, what is the function value? Ah, remember, what is the function value? Function value is the dot, solid dot here, right? So what is the values here? F of two is three. Okay, now let's take a look at part E, limit x approaching to four, four is here, okay? All right, so in order to do that, I need to take a look. Limit x approaching to four from the left-hand side, and the limit x approaching to four from the right hand side. All right, so here, let's take a look here. Limit approaching to four from the left hand side 
Let's means that I'm approaching from the left hand side. It's go ding 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 here, right? So when you're getting closer and closer to four, what is that value approaching to? Approaching to four. Okay, so the same way, if the limit approaching to four from the right hand side, that means my function value getting closer and closer to here. So what is the function value will be close to? It's close to four. Oh, wow, they are equal. So that's good. So I know the limit to x approach to four is equal to four, right? So this is limit exists because the right-hand side limit equal to left-hand side limit. That's great. Okay, so that's why the limit exists. Okay, so now let's take a look at what the f of the say. What is the f of the four? So remember, this is the function value, right? So when four here, the f of four is here. So this is the function value, but I get a hole here. So do I have a function value? No. So this is what we call the do not exist. Okay. Right. Okay. So let's go to the second one. See. Okay. So. All these problems to try to make sure you understand the basic concept of limit. That means right limit, left limit have to both exist and have the same value in order to have the limit exist. Okay, so let's say find the number A. So let's say the limit, okay, so here is the, the limit does not exist, but f of a is defined limit not exist f of a is defined all right so the f of a is defined so this one is here i can say what is the value a is equal to what a is equal to four so it's at this point why because the Okay, so if you approach this from the left hand side, okay, so let's try to see here. So if you approach here, it's a limit x approaching to four from the left hand side. So what is your function going to get closer and closer to? So this is probably going closer to point of five, right? Then the limit x getting approached to four from the right hand side. Right hand side is you approach it from here. Right, so the f of x. So what is the function approximately two? It's probably is a two point uh, two point two. But uh, you know, we don't worry about this exact value. But the point is, this is not exist. So if it's not is not equal, so the limit x point approach to four f of x b and e. Right, so it do not exist. But what is the f of four? Remember the f of four is the solid dot. So it's here. All right, so this one's here is uh, maybe it's 2.2 here. So that's why a equal to four is the answer for this one. Okay, let's take a look at b here, right? B said uh, limit exists. Okay, limit exists, but the function value is not. Okay, so let's take a look at where the limit exists. So the answer for here, the A, should be equal to 5. So it should be at this point here. Why? Why? If you take a look. Okay, so let's take a look. So... When you get it closer, if you approach it from the left hand side, let's see here. If you approach it from the left hand side, okay, so you're getting closer. Let me use a different color. Maybe that will be more obvious. All right, so here, let's see here. Let me see. Okay, so if you approach it from the left hand side, it will approach it to this point, right? So if you approach into from the right hand side, it will approach to the same point. So I know from this graph, the limit x approach to five, f of x is exists. It's equal to maybe 
right? So it's exists. So probably it's 1.8. They do not give us a very close, but it looks like you should it exists. But f of a, f of a is f of five. f of five is here, but it's a whole. So that's why this is do not exist. Okay. All right. So number C here, they tell you the limit to x approach to a from the left hand side. Both of them exist, but the limit here does not exist. All right. So if you take a look at our definitions here, they say both of this one both exist. But the limit does not exist. So remember, our definitions here is in order for the limit x approach to a f of x exists. So what did we say? We said that limit have to be equal to right limit. Okay, so let's take a look of what is the answer. Left limit has to be equal to the right limit in order to exist. Okay, so now the first ones here, it will be, okay, so the, the first ones here, it will be this point, A equal to what? Equal to two. Why here? Because the limit you approach from the left, now, hey, this one exists, is here, you approach to from the left, right, is approaching to here, limit exist. So both of them exist, but they are different. So that's why it's not, you know, so limit does not exist. Then I had another one here. So what is the another one here? My another one is the, this one, so, right? Because the four here, like here, I approach from the left, going to approach to this number. I approach from the right, going to approach to this number. So both the right limit and the left limit exist, but they are not equal. So the limit is not equal. So it's A equal to two and the four. Okay, now let's take a look at the last one they said. The last one they said, how about if you approach to the right, the lowest number equal to a function value. But if you approach from the left here, it's not equal. Okay, so that means that if I approach from the right here, I'm going to hit a solid dot, right? So like in here for two, if I try to approach it from the right, do I hit a solid dot? No, I hit a holes here. All right, so if you take a look for, right, if I approach it from the right, do I hit a solid dot? Oh yes, I hit a solid dot. So the A is a four, right? But when I approach it from the left, I hold, I hit a what? I hit an empty. So five is here, if I hit, go from the right hand side, do I hit a solid dot? No, I do not hit a solid dot. If I go to the left hand side, I do not hit a solid dot. So the only answers here will be A equal to four. Okay, so the first two problems here, they give you a very, um, a very, very good uh, concept about, uh, you know, the what we talk about is uh, how do you define the limit of existence here, all right? Okay, okay, now let's resume, take a look. Uh, our problem number three is here, okay. So this one's here, a while ago we said the limit exists, right limit has to equal to the left limit, right? So the limit not exist, you know, if right limit not equal to left limit. This one is a little bit different because we are talking about, so like asymptotes here. So in here, they said x, let's take a look at the first one here. So they said uh, limit x approach to three, right? So as you can see, limit approach to negative three, this side go here, this side, they both go to what? They both go to the infinity. So 
negative three is a vertical asymptotes, right? So in here, even if both go to the positive infinity, so you can say this is the infinity. Or you can say this is a DNE because the infinity is not exist. But this do not exist. It has a different meaning than the right limit is not equal to the left limit because this DNE is the vertical asymptotes. All right. So now let's take a look. What is the limit when I approach to two from the left hand side. When I approach to two, two is here, right? From the left hand side, that means that my function going to go to when? Going to the negative infinities here, right? So negative infinity still is DNE. So it's the same reason still, this is a vertical asymptote here. All right, now the next one here is uh, x approach to negative one. Negative one is here, right? So you approach to negative one from left hand side, from right hand side. They both approach to one, negative infinity. This is a still is a DNE. Why? Because it's still this DNE, like we said, because this is a vertical asymptote DNE. <laughs> Excuse me. So it's different than you know, what the DNE we talk about in here because the right limit, left limit concept here. So it's a diff it's a little bit different here, right? So now the the x approach to two from the right hand side. X approach to two from the right hand side. That means I'm approaching to here, so my function go where? My function go to the positive infinity. So this is the DNA. So this is uh, also is the vertical asymptotes concept. Okay. So that's why we just want to have this example to make sure we understand. You know the in general limit not exist is because right limit not equal to left limit. But also they could be is the vertical asymptotes here. Okay. Okay, let's go back to our uh, notes here, right? So for the vertical asymptotes here, right? So while ago we are talking about it. Okay, so the vertical asymptotes, it will be is like uh, when they approach to it, so they have infinity, negative infinity, and the positive infinity here, okay? All right, so now for this lecture, so let's do one last example. And then, you know, the for the, I will do a take a look, the problem number four, and then you'll be able to, so the problem number five, you know, I encourage you try to do it by yourself to see if be able to reproduce or not. Okay, so now I have, now I have a piecewise functions here. So let's say give the function below. So find which limit x does not exist. So we know piecewise function. The only possible place for the limit to not exist will be those jumping point, right? Okay, because the inside here, so for example, if it's less than zero, it's ex exponential function. It's kind of like the, so the exponential function like this, so limit for every point will be exist. So now the only thing here we worry about is this jumping point, right? Okay, so now they said the limit xA does not exist. So first, uh, I'm checking when a equal to zero, okay? So the first jumping point. So I will say limit x approach to a zero from the left hand side and the limit x approaching to zero from the right hand side. Okay, so if the limit to approach to zero from the left hand side, that means it's less than, right? So which function I'm using? I'm using ex, right? So this is ex. So when the x approach to zero and closer and closer to zero, the function value will be very close to u to zero. So from the right hand side, 
x approaches to zero from the right hand side, that means a great length, right? So I need to use the function x minus one. So that means this one going to very close to zero minus one, so negative one. Ah, what happened? They are not equal, right? So I know when the x is equal to zero, limit cannot exist. Limit will be Okay, let's take a look at the check. Now, let me check when the a equal to 1. So you will say limit x approach to 1 from the right-hand side. So limit approach to 1 from the right-hand side, that means it's a great length, right? So I will go to the limit x approach to 1 from the right-hand side. The great length will be natural function. Right, so... Now you see when the x is getting closer and closer to one, so what is the natural going to close to? Closer to zero, okay? So the same thing here, if I have the limit, okay, let me see here. Okay, so if I have a limit, x approach to one from the left-hand side of the x. So that means the limit x approach to one from the left hand side. Left hand side that means less than one. So I need to use what x minus one. So x approach to one very closely from left hand side. So this is very close to one plus one minus one equal to zero. Well, what happened? These two equal. So I know the limit x approach to 1 f of x. It does exist. This one's really is zero here. Right, so for these answers here, the which one does not exist? So that will be x equal to 0. This is the one limit is not exist. So you'll be able to do the problem number 5. So I encourage you to try to redo, you know, doing the problem number 5 to see you be able to we produce it or not. Okay. All right. This is our first lectures here. Okay. So looking forward to talk to you in our next lectures. Okay. Bye.